it is Thursday morning, right? Yes. And so we are in Apgar Village and we have a canoe rental this morning. This is not something we typically do, but it guaranteed us a going to the Sun Road Pass. And so that's why we did it. Um, but now that we're here, we're like, that might be fun. Well, it kind of looks hazy out there. So anyway, this will be kind of a, not necessarily a first, but a non-typical vacation move for us. Yeah. Uh, but it ought to be fun. We are on Lake McDonald and the water is unbelievably clear. <laughs> so the canoe ride this morning was uh, actually a lot of fun and so we decided we brought our inflatable kayak and so we decided let's go ahead and get it inspected and permitted and uh, we're going to go out this afternoon and kind of float a little bit on our side on our own timing when we're not uh, be like you got to be back in two hours so Anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to set up, uh, blow up the canoe, grab some lunch, and then go hit the lake again. That was kind of fun. about right we get the kayak in the water and look at those storm clouds but look over here beautiful blue skies it's amazing oh nope you're getting in what's moving in storm clouds Poop. In typical David and Aaron fashion, as soon as we got out on the lake, started paddling, the storm came up, and uh, like, okay, it's getting cloudy, so we're just, just kind of cruising along, and it starts raining. We're like, okay, it's starting to rain, let's head for the uh, this little uh, patch of beach on one of the little jet outs here on the peninsulas. So we get there and pull up, uh, go ahead and get out of the water for a little bit. It's trying to wait it out. 
And here comes this uh, one of the park workers in a motorboat. Uh, pulls right up to that and he's like, uh, hey, we saw some lightning. We're trying to get everybody off the water. <laughs> he's like, here, hop on, just throw your kayak on the back of the boat and we'll take you back to uh, to shore. Yeah. I'm like, okay. And as soon as he drops us off, the sun comes out. Sun comes out. So that's pretty common. We're gonna give it a little bit and uh, okay. hopefully get back out in here just a bit, so. Okay, so the boat thing didn't work. <laughs> it rained us out and winded us out. So we decided we'll come for a hike because it was sunny on the other side. So we got in the car, drove over here, and it started to rain. Yeah. <laughs> so, but we're still gonna do it because why not? So we're doing Trail of the Cedars and possibly Avalanche Lake. Um, it's gonna depend on weather and energies and all of that, <laughs> so. Um, but Trail of the Cedars we've done before, it's pretty phenomenal. It's uh, great. The size of these trees are unbelievable. So anyway, we're in for a, a pretty hike here as well, if we can stay halfway dry. Are you excited about this one at all? Yeah, I really liked it when we did it with the kids and the water was kind of muddy when we came with the kids. So yeah. I'm excited to see all the rivers now that it's clear. This, uh, it was rainy that day too. Yeah. Okay. That was the trip of the unprecedented rain. Yeah. Cool. Moving on. The camera does not do these trees justice. Mm -hmm. Like, I can show you this tree, but it's not going to be nearly do it justice to how big it is okay. in real life. I mean, that just looks like a tree. That just looks like a tree. But I'm telling you, it is enormous. And I can't get right next to that one just there. No. I like, look at, yeah, let's go look at this one. <laughs> I'm just gonna go stand in front of this one. Oh, Aaron's going I mean, <laughs> that's a big tree. <laughs> and this one over here that is even one's bigger. even bigger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they are absolutely huge. Very, very cool trail. Crazy. It's like I can't even see the top. Yeah. Wow. You? I don't know if you're inside or not. Well, uh, it's, if it's that kind of branch, that tree is you. It's like all these little ones here are you. I wonder if this big one is too. No, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. Unless those, well, those branches are coming from that tree. But if you look up there, no, that looks like some of them. It's like a cedar. I read that the black cottonwood creates shade, which is necessary for trees like the yew to grow. Wow, so yew brought to you by black cottonwood. <laughs> this should be that waterfall, huh? I think so.
found the way to stop the questions about the camera. Cover it up. Cover it up. Yeah. Nobody asks about that black blob on your bag. It's true. Cover it with a rain cover. It's and so it's interesting uh, now. Yeah. Nobody cares what that is. There's no shortage of people on the Avalanche Lake Trail. Definitely people-y. Avalanche Lake says it has just under 600 feet in elevation gain. I think it's 6,000. It feels like 6,000 and it feels like all at once. Yep. When you look up a mountain, you're like, Where's the top? And you can't see it. That's when you gotta dig deep. And you can't quit when the person in front of you is a mom with a baby on her back. Yeah. Like a two year old baby. You just gotta keep going. Well, okay, there you go. Why did we go up? Right. But look to your left. Wow. Oh. Didn't even crap. see that mountain there. I didn't. Oh, hey, mountain. Didn't see you there. How you doing? So, have you seen the signs that... Well, it's the story of the lady that saw the Animal Crossing sign and was like... Why would you put an Animal Crossing sign right in the middle of a busy highway? Why not move that to somewhere that is not so busy so that it's less dangerous for people and less dangerous for the animals? Why would you put an Animal Crossing sign right in the middle of a busy highway? Well, I feel like I have a similar solution to all of these trails. When you go up a giant mountain and you climb a good portion of, of hill. And then you turn around and you start walking downhill. Well, just keep it level right there. No reason to go downhill and lose all the up that you had. So that's my solution for the national park system. Once you get up, don't let it come back down unless you're on your way back. Problem solved. 
look at the size of this tree that they had to cut a big section out of over the trail. Let's stand up next to that. Yeah. I'm five feet tall. <laughs> no, if I say you're six four. Oh, I'm six foot four. That's crazy. You can get a few good slabs out of that. Yeah. You want to haul it back down? No thanks. back from Avalanche Lake and guess what it's raining again as I think you can tell because I think my face is totally smudged and blurred out yep hey there I am that's because it's raining again we are at least back on the Trail of Cedars so avalanche lake trail done and done and don't have to do it again <laughs> probably won't do it again we'll tell you our uh, full feedback uh at another another point but right now we're going to finish the cedar uh trail of cedars find a bathroom go find some dinner a hot meal a hot meal get dry and uh get back to camp all right, good morning. This is, I guess I was gonna say it's our final day in Glacier. It's, we're actually leaving Glacier this morning, yeah. but making a few stops along the way. Um, the places that we didn't get to hit because of rain. Because of rain, yeah. We actually back, came back to the Trail of Cedars to uh, hit just a couple extra spots with the, the 360, so. Um, but just working the back backside. Um, you wanna give a, overview of we haven't really talked about this but, of uh the avalanche lake trail uh, so it says 1.8 miles and it says 600 just under 600 feet of elevation gain. right but man it doesn't feel i mean that those numbers don't sound so bad when you just right. say it <laughs> but i swear it was the longest 1.8 miles and there were montana miles for sure <laughs> the incline is almost unrelenting you're going uphill steep slopes for basically the entire 1.8 miles there's we, a few times where you get a little relief but it does not last and we've, we've done the uh hidden lake trail um or hidden lake overlook yeah and it was good morning y'all it was uphill a lot like there was a, a good yeah. amount of uh, elevation gain there as well um, although I don't know the number on that one yeah. but to double check that I'll put that at the bottom of the screen right now but um, <clears throat> it it was tough but it didn't feel like this uphill I mean and so. the hidden lake trail like you said it's steep there's a lot of incline and um, but the it's like paved sorry look at these cedars right here. those are crazy they're, they're enormous anyway sorry <laughs> continue it's it's well-maintained trail there's a mm -hmm. lot of um like wooden boardwalk right. type areas with steps for you to walk on um the steps kind of sometimes make it harder than a normal incline but 
this trail, there are roots and rocks and slippery a lot spots. Of, a lot of tripping hazards. Yeah, like it was just harder. So, I mean, I still, know. you know, very manageable, but um, when you look at, when you're looking at trails that say easy for, uh, again, yeah. in our mind, like we're gonna be bringing uh, gear. gear and all of that kind of stuff, uh, you, you don't expect that, but, um, the once you get to the lake, it's a beautiful lake. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's fed by like what four or five waterfalls. Four or five waterfalls, so that's pretty insane. Um, lots of people. Um, so if you're if you're going there to try to get this pristine, peaceful experience, experience, lake, right? Not probably there. not going to happen. A lot of people go up there to swim, and so there'll probably be a lot of people in your shots. Yeah, so, and. Uh, it is the most, from what I've read, the most popular trail in the park. So yeah. you are going to have a lot of people. And like he said, people swimming. So you, it's like five waterfalls flowing down the mountain. You want to get this beautiful shot. And it looks more like a Florida beach. Exactly. <laughs> so it just, it was a little disappointing for us after that big of a an investment of time and energy to get up there. And there wasn't even this big payoff of amazing shot. But, you know not to discourage anybody from doing that um from doing that hike it was it was definitely i'm glad we did it yeah um but just be prepared lots of incline lots of people and uh yeah so that's that's our our take on the avalanche lake trail yeah. um but we are back here at trail of cedars now and in a beautiful spot flip it around here got the river going right there mountains in the background it's uh it's pretty fantastic so we're gonna go ahead and set up a 360 camera I do feel like we should throw the caveat in there about Avalanche Lake Hike that we did it in probably the the mid afternoon, about yeah. three thirty ish. Um, so if and you it was it, raining. And it was raining. So <laughs> if you do it early in the morning, probably not going to be nearly as many people. Yeah. Uh, elevation doesn't change in the morning, but um, your experience might yeah. might vary. Um, exactly. Like right now here on the Trail of Cedars, there really aren't very many people. Right. And the few people that there are are probably here for Avalanche Lake. Mm -hmm. So yeah, morning or late, late in the evening maybe, it might have less. Yeah. I mean, there were uh, still quite a few people going all the way up was as we were coming down, and it was probably six thirty ish. Yeah. Um. So, but I would say if you want less people, early morning is better. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, just wanted to throw that little caveat out there. We did it late afternoon, um, so probably a lot more people there uh, at that time than in the mornings. David had dropped me off because there was no parking at this little um, area just 
before you get to Logan Pass as you head east. Uh, yeah, east of Lachlan Park. Because we've been told there are goats, mountain goats here every morning. And it would be just my luck that the day I get to come here, there's no goats. So we tried. It's kind of the only iconic glacier animal that we haven't seen this trip. And honestly, we've never seen one. We've seen the bighorn sheep, but we've never seen a mountain goat. So I'm bummed, but that means it's a reason to come back, right? All right, we just left Glacier National Park and our hearts hurt a little bit because it's our most favorite place on the planet, you guys. Um, but the trip is not over. We are headed to the Badlands National Park in South Dakota. And uh, we're, what did it say, about 11 and a half hours out from that. So uh, not sure how much of that trip we'll take today and how much we'll try to do tomorrow. But um, in the meantime, Glacier was fantastic. Yeah, it was never, great. Never Just, disappoints. Absolutely. It was great to spend a couple of days there. Uh, especially since we were just, you know, day trips is all we ever have done. Yeah. So be able to spend a few days in Glacier itself has been amazing. So, um, yeah. So anyway, the trip continues on to Badlands National Park and uh, then back to home to see the kiddos and the doggos. I don't know if you can see in the video, there's just haze everywhere. We were talking about it a little bit yesterday. This is all of the smoke from the fires in Canada. And uh, it's apparently hit uh, this part of Montana to where it's, it's pretty hazy and the air quality is kind of going down. It was interesting that when we were in Glacier, when we were leaving, the day we were leaving, the west side of the park was pretty clear. We were happy. We're like, all right, we got a good clear day so we can get some, some footage of uh, going to the Sun Road and some of the mountains. And as soon as we crossed the Continental Divide, it's, it got super hazy. Yeah. And we were like, what is going on? And then Aaron looked it up and said that the smoke from those uh, Canadian fires, it, it separates at the Continental Divide and uh is on the east side so that was we saw that firsthand that was actually kind of interesting it was but it also made the sun like the yeah. sunrise yesterday morning because you know the sun's coming up from that east side it just the sun it just stayed in that golden glowing yeah it was filtered in the morning with like the pink sky it stayed like that for hours after sunrise yeah the sun had to get really high before it wasn't feeling like yeah, that was pretty interesting too. We just kept looking at it again before we even knew what was going on. We we're like, man, it is still. Why is the just, sky? Why so is it pink? so pink? And yeah, so that was a, that was a pretty interesting little deal. Yeah.
right, we have made it to Mount Rushmore. And we're, oh, there it is right there. So see, we shouldn't have to go very far. So anyway, it was right along the way. So we thought better to stop. So we're gonna go check it out. Okay, so that's Mount Rushmore. And this is one of those things that we were talking about. We said, okay, now we've seen it, you know? And I know there's probably a lot of you out there going, no, there's way more to there's do so than just go, right. Uh, this, uh, I don't know, this was one I, I wanted to see it, mm -hmm. but, uh, but not, that's about it. That's about it. Now I'm ready to go hit Badlands and yeah. Yeah, head for home. So, yeah, it was cool to see. It's uh, a very impressive, you know, mm -hmm. man-made object. <laughs> but, uh, but just in case you're wondering how long of a lens you need, 800 is too much. Too much. <laughs> too much. You get about that much right there. That's that's about the shot you get with the 800. So I didn't even need to be zoomed in all the way with my 70 to 200. So yeah. 200 was too much. Yeah. So anyway, cool. We've seen it. Done. Check yep. it off the list. Let's move on to Badlands. On this side, you have grassland. Very flat, green grass as far as the eye can see. And over here, it's like the earth just caved in. <laughs> and all the grass is gone. And you have collapsed earth desert.
all right you guys that is gonna do it for us on this trip um badlands was pretty cool yeah driving through it was um we didn't have a lot of time to stop here and we were talking about that earlier like i know there's probably a lot more to do here kind of like at mount rushmore probably a lot more to do than we had time to explore and figure out um but just in the amount of time we had to kind of drive through it it was pretty cool yeah. um, did not expect it, it like seeing pictures of the badlands you kind of expect you, you know what to expect when you see it but i thought it'll kind of like gradually turn into that terrain and it didn't it was just like grassland 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 boom big canyons <laughs> it was kind of crazy it was interesting but uh but it's been a great vacation i mean we've got it it feels like a whirlwind like i feel like we've we've had about four or five different vacations yeah. in one um i mean eight national parks eight national parks um we haven't counted the states and miles yet yeah well i'll tell you right now we're sitting at uh 4200 about 4250 is where we are on miles right now so um but it's been a blast i mean going through seeing everything from plains to deserts uh to uh mountains rocky mountains and then you're in utah i mean it's just been an absolute blast so i hope you guys have enjoyed following along with us and um, maybe you've seen something in this video that kind of inspires you guys to go check out some of these places. Um, maybe you've already been to some of these places. Comment below and tell us what we've missed. Yeah. Uh, tell us, because obviously we're going to try to come back to uh, these spots. So tell us what we, the big things that we missed um, in going through these parks. And that way we can put them on our list for next time and, and maybe help others too. So um, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, if you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. It helps us so much. Um, it's free. And then you can hit that bell icon and, and get notified when we upload our next videos. Um, it just makes a, a difference for us in the channel. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next vacation. about to cross from South Dakota to Iowa there's the sign right there oh. and I have to say that South Dakota your roads this we've never been on a road that not only bounces you up and down for like I don't know a hundred miles it seems to bounce you back and forth and so we are Erin said she feels like it is training us to do a hula hoop <laughs> so we're trying to sing to the radio and it's, it's like, like uh, we can't uh, fall in love <laughs> i've never okay. seen you know what it is smoothed out <laughs> iowa thank come you on, come on south dakota pick up your game a little bit jeez louise oh, like, <laughs> i'm so glad we're not getting shaken anymore iowa knows how to do it jeez that was terrible South Dakota and their hula hoop training road. <laughs> Unbelievable.